Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Keith, thanks for having us. Uh, it's I, I always love talking to you. Uh, I'm excited to catch up and hear all the great things happening at Jellyfish. And if, if people are curious to hear a, kind of like a deeper dive on Andrew's background and all, you know, the story of, you know, his experience at Endeka and other companies, we did a full on podcast episode uh, back in last June, it was published. So it was episode 180. So go check that out. But today we're going to focus our energy on Jellyfish. So uh, Jellyfish is enabling the business of engineering. So talk about what you guys do. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I think actually it goes a little bit back to, I think, where I started my career and my co-founder. So myself, Dave and Phil, I, I think first we go all the way back to this company in DECA, but um, we kind of grew our careers running big product teams, big engineering teams. And we started it, um, we frankly found those jobs are hard looking back at our careers. And, and we kind of unpacked it as why is the job hard? Um, the job is hard because, you know, as a leader of those teams, you're trying to connect the business side which has business goals, revenue targets, financials, all these things from the kind of art of engineering, right? Um, and you're kind of holding both sides together. And the reality is um, neither party understands each other, right? And so, um, so the job is made even harder because you're basically like holding on um, through strength of will on both sides, trying to make everybody work well together. Um, and all this with no data and no connection, right? And so for Jellyfish, you know, we found that as both the pain and the opportunity here to kind of help fix this, right? So we aim to do this by bringing those two sides together through data and helping people understand how the two, fit, the two pieces fit together. Now, the year is 2021. Um, you know, we're not asking for anybody to do any extra data entry. Um, and so we do this by connecting to the existing systems um, the teams already use, like Jira, GitHub, all of these things, um, and combine those, you know, engineering signals with, um, business systems and contexts like um, HR systems or roadmap systems so that, um, you know, these leaders can understand and communicate where these things fit together, right? So very um, kind of quickly and tersely, like we're trying to do for engineering what Salesforce did for sales, right? Um, and I say that because when I started my career in the late 90s, there was a time before Salesforce where sales was run without data, right? Without any visibility. Um, and, and it was a lot of... Um, gut feel and trust me. And I think the head of sales job was equally hard. Um, and I think you slide forward 10 years after that, um, you know, what company isn't data rich in sales? We all know what the, the CAC is and the LTV, like in a Jiffy. Um, and then the companies actually, you know, invest deeper in sales. They understand how to do it. They make smarter decisions. They're like, hey, we're stalled in leads. So let's kind of pump up that side of the house or, hey, we're actually having some product issues. So let's slow down the pace of actually certain kinds of sales, right? They can do this because they can see the full picture. And so our ambition is to do the same for engineering, right? And bring the business and the engineering side together where you're no longer just talking about code. You can talk about how this product and this code and this engineer and their time is actually fitting into the larger context of the business. Well, when I think about, um, you know, your analogy of Salesforce, it is shocking that, engineering hasn't had that same, you know, data-driven approach where marketing and finance, every function of a company pretty much has this data-driven me mentality, but engineering hasn't, which is shocking. Um, now, do you think your, like your customers, like there's a sales force that fits any size company. Is yeah. it similar for, for Jellyfish as far as being able to work with all different sizes of companies? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. And, and um, well, so number one, I'll, since you brought the analogy, I mean, when you look at those other functions, um, it all didn't happen at once, by the way, right? Um, this has been a 20 year evolution that's actually happened. I think sales went first, um, most critical probably, and, and probably easiest to kind of collect and understand what the data was. I think marketing probably came next around seeing um, kind of multi-touch attribution type things. Um, and then, you know, you kind of march through the organization. And, and I think engineering is the last department um, that has gotten that kind of a metrics based visibility. Um, and so I think, you know, I think if you look forward to kind of vision from Jellyfish, yes, I think it actually addresses, you know, any and all size companies out there. Um, because, look, the reality is all businesses are software companies today, right? This is what we clearly know in 2021, right? Um, and so whether you're talking about an air conditioning company or a software company or a small startup, all of them actually have management and visibility and decision needs across this stuff. Um, now, for us today, I think we focus a bit more, 
right? Because like, you know, we are a growth company and, um, but at the same time, we still have limited resources, right? So we generally focus today on software companies as our kind of like core target. Um, but I think we're actually starting to, to deliver into kind of this global 2000 set as well, where we're actually crossing into kind of non-software companies, because again, every company is a software company today. Well, it's exciting time. There's a lot of momentum. You guys just recently announced 31 and a half million series B round of funding that was led by Insight Partners with participation from previous investors, Excel and Wing Venture Capital. So talk about the business now. Like where, where are things? Wow. I mean, you know, I, I think we started earlier and I was just saying it, it, it's, it's a little weird to say this because I think all the difficulty in the world, um, but we've been tremendously lucky, right? Um, I'll say for me personally and our team, I think we've all been very lucky on a on a, on a personal health and, and, and from the global crisis perspective, but also from a business perspective, we've been incredibly lucky, right? Um, we have been accelerating um, in this environment, probably because people are working from home as a catalyst, as a starting point to think about this. Um, and so, you know, I think we said 2020, I think we saw something like 5X growth, right? Actually probably north of that. Um, and what's even more crazy is like really that kicked in um, probably late Q2, Q3, Q4. So it was backloaded too. So like, actually, if you extrapolate, it's even kind of more crazy than that. And it's been continuing since. Um, and so, you know, we've been, you know, reflecting a bunch on that, which is like, how did we, you know, you know, how did we actually tap into that? Um, and, and, and how do we play this out? Um, and so, I mean, looking back, I, I think a couple things are happening. I think um, all the work from home part of it has really caused um, a lot of companies, whether it's directly work from home or some hybrid, um, really strongly needing better visibility, right? Um, you know, you're not walking the floor anymore. Um, you're not you're doing elevator rides and lunches and, and some teams are in person and some aren't. And you're trying to understand how to provide some object objectivity across the team and how do I drive alignment and, and non-bias across these teams. And, and that really means that things like what we're doing are actually really material to that, right? Um, second of which is, that as companies, um, whether they're going through hyper growth or um, they're going through some kind of budget constraints, um, efficiency suddenly really matters, right? Um, and it's no longer this kind of, you know, I think you and I probably just saw a decade where efficiency was like, thing we'll worry about later. Yeah, but I think efficiency now matters a ton, right? you know, because efficiency can actually help you grow more aggressively. Um, or if you're actually in a pinch, you need to understand where to put your scarce resources. Um, and that's really a place where we've actually really sung and actually connected with people on that. And so I think what we're seeing is that like, the, you know, the, the crisis really brought the opportunity to the fore, right? Um, and the need to the fore for our customers um, and our ability to help them is really kind of accelerated. So yeah, we've been lucky. And, and then on, on the fundraising part of it, we are incredibly lucky that the folks at Insight and our existing investors jumped in. I mean, I, I think, frankly, um, it's a really weird time right now for startups, right? Like we're not, you know, um, walking through Silicon Valley, um, talking, you know, to firm at firm. Um, in fact, I think things are happening really quickly. And the folks at Insight, um, I, I think, understood our business crisply. They came in hard. Um, and I think we're so lucky to actually have their support. And then our existing investors have seen the opportunity from the beginning. Um, and it's really just catalyzing now. So what, what are the plans in terms of hiring? Like what, uh, what functional areas are you hiring for? I mean, this may seem like a default answer, but we're hiring across the board. Um, I think it's probably worth explaining why. Um, so today we are, geez, I think we're 45 people today. Generally clusters still around Boston, um, just because, you know, we've all been, you know, here in this part of it. Um, but I think, you know, from a hiring perspective, you know, look, our sales has actually, um, you know, been scaling, as I said earlier. And so kind of investing deeper into that is a, an, an of course, right? Um, and I think we've been, um, you know, if anything, we've probably been undermarketed as a company. Um, and I think we've only really started kind of building our marketing efforts probably in the last, geez, maybe four or six months now. And I think there's lots more to do there. I think when you look at the market as a whole, I think our biggest challenge right now is people don't know about what we do and they don't know about jellyfish, right? You know, our probably number one, two, three, and four competitors is do nothing, don't know about jellyfish. And so we really have to actually kind of do that. Um, and as we kind of push into, you know, sales and marketing, like, you know, our demand is just like, you know, through the roof. And so we need a lot of help to actually make sure those customers are successful and kind of investing in the, in the success side. Um, and, and those really kind of talk about the go-to-market side of the house. Um, and as a company, like, I really do think we're probably only at inning two in this story, right? Um, 
including the business, but also including the product and vision, right? Um, you know, I, I think I painted a kind of macro picture of where we're going, and I think we've done a lot. Um, I think there's a ton to do here. Um, and I think, you know, the product and the needs are constantly evolving, right? As our customers understand more, need more, put us more into their core business processes, um, we have to stay on the ball and actually keep um, investing in, in product and engineering and innovation right across there. Um, because I think, you know, for us, you know, we're never satisfied in that part of it. I think, you know, for us to really move the needle and change the way that companies execute engineering with business, um, I think we actually have to touch all corners of the organization um, to do this. Um, and then last of which is, you know, as you stack up the people here, I think the support functions are um, just really necess necessitated, right? Um, you know, you and I were joking earlier about, um, you know, sending stuff like I am the mailroom right now. And so clearly we need to kind of, um, you know, beef up the, the help here across the board. Um, I think we're all, you know, we're all digging in, trying to actually deal with the scale that's, that's happening and coming. Um, but we need help across the board to do it. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and time um, for us to kind of build that team to take us to the next level. So as an extension of that, like what, what's the culture like? What's the culture like day-to-day -day like at, at Jellyfish? Oh, wow. Uh, culture is such an interesting question. And I think there's almost the, uh, there's the before after questions I think we could probably delve into. But I, I think when people talk about culture, I actually think it's, it's not about me, right? Um, and it's not clear that I can actually answer one question around. It's about the team. Right. Um, I think we have an amazing culture that, you know, doesn't take itself too seriously, um, I think inspires others. But a big part of it is, is it comes from the team. Right. Um, you know, especially at a scale like ours and forward, it would be silly if I said like, hey, this is the culture that, you know, we demand. I, I can't tell people to have fun. Right. Fun happens because people make it. Um, but I think where we influence is it actually how we hire. You know, I, you know, I generally have a litmus test that every person we bring on has to um, kind of teach me and, and someone something different, right? Like they have to inspire us all to work differently and better. Um, and, and so I think a lot of it actually comes from the team. And so it is a moving target that I think has been really cool to see evolve in, in the last year. Um, and I think like from a culture in, you know, back to my original point around culture in, um, culture in this kind of Zoom climate, um, I think we're making the best that we can, whether we're doing, you know, trivia nights together, whether we're, you know, um, but, but I do miss the kind of in-person stuff. Um, I was, I was kind of um, joking with one of our team members. Um, I think right before we left, we did, did this awesome hot ones challenge where we like got, you know, everyone on the team, um, geez, a year ago. And um, it's probably the last thing we did and, and got a ton of chicken wings and a bunch of hot sauces and really just kind of you know, no one could take themselves too seriously in that environment. And, and like, how do we do that again? And how do we do that kind of stuff virtually is an open question. Um, but looking forward to the chance to do it, things like that again. Well, if you are interested in exploring opportunities at Jellyfish, you need to go check out all their job listings on VentureFizz. Go to their company page, which is venturefizz.com backslash jellyfish, and you'll see all their openings there. And I mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, there is a great podcast episode where we talk a lot about Andrew's foundational story and you know the trials and tribulations of different things he's done in the past plus lots of details on jellyfish so you can check that out as well andrew thanks so much for taking the time to walk us through all the great things that you guys are up to hey, thanks for having me it's always awesome well i hope you enjoyed this video at VentureFizz, our mission is to share the stories of companies their people and culture so if you're interested in more interviews with founders and executives in the tech industry, make sure you click on the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.